One of the more beautiful stories over the past couple decades has been our ability, our growing ability to eke more performance and more speed out of existing wireless devices. So if you look back 10 years, 20 years, the increase in wireless performance is actually pretty astonishing. It's not as astonishing as the increase in CPU performance, but these are being driven by very different trends. So um, today we actually are at the point where we have something called capacity achieving codes. So what are capacity achieving codes? Well, remember, there's this, um, when I'm transmitting wireless data, there is this process of converting whatever the series of zeros and ones in my packet are. So I have a packet, and I need to convert that somehow to a waveform that's going to encode the data that I'm going to send over the channel. Now this process, you remember that the channel here between the sender and receiver has properties that make it possible for me to bound the amount of information that can be sent over it. So depending on how far the sender is from the receiver and depending on how powerful the sender's transmission is, I can compute the signal that the receiver is going to, the signal strength at the receiver. Um, I, there's also some noise in the environment that I can compute. Um, and if I plug this, I know how much bandwidth I'm using. And what I can do is I can plug this into the uh, Shannon capacity theorem and I can compute the bound on the capacity of the channel. So there is no way for a channel of, of a band, given bandwidth for a particular sender receiver pair to transmit more than a specific bit rate. So let's pretend for the sake of uh, this example that that bit rate is uh, 10, well let's make it a little bit something more realistic, right? 10 is pretty small. Um, so let's pretend that that's 10 uh, kilobits per second. So the Shannon limit tells me that there is absolutely no way that I can transmit any faster than this. However, I can transmit slower than this, of course, and depending on how good my encoding is, I'm going to achieve some fraction of the Shannon limit. So you can imagine that, you know, here's the capacity that I'm actually achieving, here's the limit of 10 kilobits per second, and here's time. And what's been happening is the earliest wire wireless radios, maybe they got, you know, half of the Shannon limit, and then over time I got a little bit more, you know, 0 0.7, and at some point I'm actually doing pretty well. So I'm I'm getting maybe 80% of what I'd be able to achieve based on this bound. Today, we actually have uh, encoding. So remember, how much bandwidth I'm able to get depends a lot on how clever the encoding process is. So turning these bits into waveforms. The process of doing that and then the process of decoding them on the receiver is what determines how close I can get to this theoretical bound. Now, what's happened over the years is we've had better and better encodings, and today we actually have encodings that are referred to as capacity achieving codes that can approach sort of uh, infinitely close the Shannon limit. So I can get, you know, 0.99999% of the Shannon capacity for a given channel. So these are referred to as capacity achieving codes. There's sometimes, uh, there's, uh, one of the families is something called turbo codes. Um, and there's only one problem with our current set of capacity achieving codes that causes them to not necessarily be deployed in practice. And that's the fact that they have to, they only achieve the channel capacity once they operate over a lot of data. So you can think about it this way, given an infinitely long packet, the encoding can actually get some, you know, it can get within some distance of the limit. And you know, as the packet gets longer and longer, I get closer and closer. The problem is I don't send infinitely long packets. The packets that I transmit over wireless links have a fixed size to them, um, or, and that size is not necessarily very long. And so the benefits of these capacity achieving codes are not necessarily felt. And so, but on the other hand, you know, again, if you look back a couple of decades, are the increases in wireless performance. So when you look at the move from 802.11b to G, to some of the new 802.11 Wi-Fi technologies are improving capacity through other means. But at least uh, for a couple of decades, a lot of the improvements were just simply due to better encoding. So a better process of converting those bits into signals.